Good evening, brothers and sisters. I hope this video finds you doing well. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. God has been so good to all of us. If you're able to see me or hear me now, you know that God is still in the blessing business. He, he woke you up this morning. You open your eyes to another, another day, a new day, one that you've never seen before and one that you'll never see again. God has been and still is good to all of us. Amen. And first and foremost, I would like to thank everybody who who um, participated in the appreciation. Um, you blessed me beyond my my wildest dreams. I just thank God for you. I never thought in a million years that someone would show love to me like that. And I just thank all of you. And and we're going to we're going to stay with that word. I, I'm not going to let up and <laughs> I'm going to do what God tells me to do. I'm going to say what God tells me to say. And I thank God for you all showing a love as you did um, on Sunday. Amen. And we're looking forward to God doing some great things, great things there um, at Mizpah and and hopefully in in Appling County and spreading abroad. Amen. There is a word from the Lord today. There's a word from the Lord today. And we ask that you um, be attentive, open your ears and make sure you pay attention to the word. Amen. But before we get into God's word, we ask that you join us in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Thanking you for being so good to us. Thanking you for giving us another opportunity to pray and get it right with you. Father, we we know that we are undeserving of the many fold blessings that you give us, but because you're so gracious, because you're so merciful, you bless us anyway. Father, we're coming now to, to give your word and we ask that you open up the hearts and the minds of your people and let them be receptive to your word. Hide me behind the cross that Jesus will be seen. Father, for we want to be, we want to stand with boldness and give your word. We thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost to bring this forth. These and other blessings we ask in our son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our word for today is found, is coming to us from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. And want to look at one verse, and that's that 11th verse. Isaiah 55 and 11. Amen. And it reads as follows. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which it, that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Amen. And we'd like to speak to you from a thought today. If God said it, that settles it. If God said it. That settles it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and, and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, dot, dot, dot. God said a lot of stuff. And in that first chapter from verses three through verse 31, everything that is and will and will come came into existence because God said it. Before there was time, God was speaking. God was saying something. Time did not exist until God spoke and said, let there be. And see, I'm going to need to prove that. See, the way we think of time, we have time measured in, in centuries and in decades and in years and months and days and hours and minutes and then, and then seconds. And none of that existed before God said, let there be. Amen. The book of Genesis clearly tells us that God spoke light into existence. Light came out of the darkness. He spoke it into existence and then he separated the two. 
And verse five says that God called the light day and the darkness night and the evening and the morning were the first day. Amen. God called the day into existence. And that's when time began, because before God spoke that there was no day, <laughs> there was no measurement of time. There was just God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. None of this existed. God did this and, and, and he produced what we now know as time. And at no time did he ask anybody's opinion. I haven't read where God went to the side and said, what you think about this? He did not. He did not send out a survey for someone to choose the 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 way something was going to look or the way that something should sound or the what color something should be. He did not take a poll. He did not take a vote. He did not ask for a motion. He did not ask for a second. A Amen. When God created, God created because that's the way he wanted it to be. It was on his mind when he said it. That settled it. And 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 see, and everything he created, he upholds, he directs, he governs with his with his providential word and whatever God speaks out of his mouth or whatever he sends from his mouth, whatever word comes forth, it will accomplish what he sent it out to do. Amen. Amen. And what's true about God's word, God's creative and and providential word which comes from his mouth. A amen. It, it's it's also his written word that we find in our Bible. And and the Bible also accomplishes what God set it out to do. Amen. So what does the Bible accomplish? What 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 does the word of God that's written accomplish? God sent the inspiration of the word to men to write down because he wanted to turn the world back to him. Amen. He wanted them to have something that they could see, that they could read, that they would understand some instructions that would show them the way back to him. He want to tell them, he want, he want to tell people how they can get back to him and in proper relationship with him. Because mankind had had fell into a mess. We had fell into sin and we had become alienated or we had become lost from God. And God had a plan to redeem the world through Jesus and through his written word. A amen. And he did it in the Old Testament and he said it in the New Testament. And it tells about the plan that God had for reconciliation for man back to himself. Amen. And God uses the Bible as a road map. And, you know, when you you're going to a certain place that you've never been before, you use a map or you use GPS or you use Google. But it will show you the way the turns and and the stops that you need to make in order to get to that destination. And that's what the Bible is for. The Bible tells us the turns and the stops and and how far we should go and and where we going. And our, our ultimate destination is getting to God. Amen. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. And that is what God's written word does. It helps us to find our way back to God. David asked the Lord in Psalm 119 and 133. He said, Lord, order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. See, David knew that the only way that he could get to God is that God show him the way to go. <laughs> Amen. No man could show us the way to get to God. God had to show us the way to get back to him. In other words, God has to give us directions to get back to him. And that's why Jesus, who's God's word made flesh, picks it up in John 14 and 6 and said that I am the way. Amen. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the father. No man gets the God except coming through the son. Amen. You got to come through the word in order to get to God. Amen. The only way that we can get to God 
is to follow who he sent and to hear what he said. That is the only way we're going to get back to God. And that's the way God has said it. And that settles it. There is no other way to get to God. And he has said it when Jesus says that I am the way. He did not say that I am a way. He said that I am the way, which means that 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 settles it. The only way that you're going to see God is that you have to accept his word. Amen. The word made flesh and that written word. Amen. And God's written word is not failing to achieve what he wants it to achieve. And it's not it's not returning to him empty because God says that whatever he sends his word out to do, it's going to accomplish what he sent it out to do. And it's going to come back to it will not come back to him void or empty, despite what the enemy is trying to get us to believe that the church ain't going nowhere. And and since COVID, the church is not going. The church is still growing. The church is still going to do or become what God wants it to become. Amen. Despite what the enemy is saying. Amen. And this, it has nothing to do with the smoke and mirrors that a lot of churches may have. It has nothing to do with the superstars and the celebrity to draw all these people in. It has nothing to do with the theatrics and the lies that folks tell. It's all about the word. It's all about the word that God has spoken that will accomplish what he sent it forth to do. When John, the revelator, was on the Isle of Patmos, John said that he saw a number that no man could number in that new city coming down. He saw a number that no man could number. It had to be millions of people that were saw that were seen. And just think it started in an upper room in Jerusalem with only 120 souls. And when the Holy Ghost came, Amen. He put a word down on the inside that went out and it spread like fire through Jerusalem, starting in Jerusalem, then in Judea and in Samaria and then throughout the world. And, and the last check, the last check or the poll that was taken, there are over two billion Christians all over the world. Amen. God said it and that settles it. Amen. The ones John saw, those those millions of souls, those were the ones who were saved. Those people, those represent the ones who were in the church. And what caused the church was not the smoke and mirrors. It was not the song and dance. It was not the charismatic speaker, but it was the word because I heard Jesus say, I heard Jesus say the word made flesh. He said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. So it's still that word. It's still that word. You don't have to have dances to get the young people in. You don't have to do all this. If you're lifting up the name of Jesus and they want Jesus and they want Jesus, if you're lifting up the name of Jesus, we will get these parents on the right track and then they'll get their children on the right track because his word says train up a child in the way they should go in the way they should go. A amen. And when they're old, they will not they will not depart from that. That's what God has said. That's in his word. And if God said it, when if God said it, it will accomplish what it was sent out to do. A amen. And lastly, lastly, I'm not going to keep you long. Lastly, everything that God said back then is still what he's saying today. Let me say that again. Everything that God said back then. Everything that's written that God said back then is still what he is saying today. There is nothing that God had said back then <laughs> that was wrong. That's wrong. Uh, what That's wrong today. Amen. Let me get that right. There is nothing that God has said was wrong back then that became right today. That's the way I want to say it. Amen. God says in Malachi three and six, he said, for I am the Lord. I change not. And then the writer of Hebrew 13, chapter 13, verse eight says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And both of these verses mean the same thing. If God said it, 
that settles it. If, if, if it was wrong when he said it yesterday, God didn't change his mind overnight because he slept on it. <laughs> Amen. If it was wrong, if he said it was wrong, whatever you did, whatever you're doing is wrong. If he said it was wrong back then in the days of Moses, in the days of Noah and, and, and in the days of Adam, it's still wrong today. It has not become right since we're living in this modern age. Amen. Stealing, killing, lying, gossiping, um, um, coveting. Lusting and and overeating are still sins today. They were sins back then. They are still sins today. Watch this. Fornication is still sin today. Having sex outside of marriage is still a sin. Adultery, having sex with some other somebody else besides your spouse is still a sin. Homosexuality is still an abomination as God said back in the book of Leviticus. It has not changed. Alternative lifestyles, whatever you want to call it. I know y'all don't like me now, but it's okay. Whatever you want to call it, transgender, all this other stuff. God said it was wrong back then. It is wrong today. God don't make any mistakes. Sin back then is still sin today. Amen. Amen. And last time I checked, God has not made any amendments to his commandments. So whatever God said was wrong back then is wrong today. And there's no rightness. There's no tolerance. If God said it, that settles it. So my brothers and sisters, we, the real church of Christ, and I'm not talking about that denomination, Church of Christ. I'm talking about the real church of Christ, the one that he established that he is the son of the living God. That church of Christ, amen, must follow what God has said and not what the world wants it to be. Because the world is trying to put their little twist and turns on what God has said and trying to make it stand. Amen. It's what God said. And that's that that settles it. God is the majority all by himself and he will always have the last word. And you better believe that whatever he said will turn out just like he said it would. Jesus says in Matthew five and 18, he said, for verily I say unto you till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Till all be fulfilled. Jesus said, my word ain't going nowhere. It ain't going to change. It ain't going to deviate. It's going to stand until until everything comes to fruition as God has already settled it. And then David says in Psalm 119 and verse 89, back in the Old Testament, he said forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. And the book can be closed on that. David says that your word, thy word is settled in heaven. Whatever you have said, you don't have to have a committee. You don't have to have a debate. That's what it is. Amen. And whatever I've said tonight, whatever I've said this evening is not from the book of Carlisle. I want you to know that it's not from the book of Carlisle. It's from the word of God. Spoken or written. God said it. And I don't preach to be popular. I don't preach to be liked. I just I just try to do what God has called me to do. A Amen. And he said, he said, he said through the prophet or the, the apostle Paul, he said, and let us not be weary. In well doing. <laughs> Let me say that again. And let us not be weary in well doing. And he said, because in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. So I encourage you, my brothers and sisters, walk with me by faith and not by sight. Because if God said it, that settles it. There's no change in it. God is not going to change for us. We need to change for him. If his word is already written, 
We can't have our little agendas and trying to work out our little agendas. We got to we got to line up with what God has said, because it's not going to change. He's a loving God. He's a gracious God. He's a merciful God, but he's not going to change to accept your sinful lifestyle. Amen. Amen. So if God said it, that settles it. Line yourself up, get in line with the word and do what the word says. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We hope that we've said something this evening that will that will be a blessing to you. I know a lot of things that that we say uh, that's in the word we don't like because flesh don't like the word. There's a contradiction there. There's a war going on, as Paul says in Romans seven and the flesh don't like the word. But we got to get that flesh under subjection and line up with God's word. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your continued support of this ministry. Amen. We ask that you share this video, share this video with family and friends. I mean, they, I, I'm, I'm not giving any kind of motivational speeches. I'm worried about your soul. I'm worried about your soul. Amen. And if you're not doing anything on, on Sunday morning, come on out to MISPA. We start in the Blarney community. We start at um, 10 a.m. with Sunday school every Sunday morning and then following Sunday school around 11, 15, 1130. Um, we go into our worship service and we ask that you come on and join us out there where, you know, the Lord, we let the Lord have his way in his house. Amen. So we ask that you come on and join us and feel free. You are welcome at MISPA. Amen. If you want to sow a seed in this ministry, you're more than welcome to do so through check, um, through cashier's check, money order, um, and that address, you can mail it to the address at the bottom of the screen as Mispa Baptist Church, Post Office Box 1275, Baxley, Georgia, 31515. Amen. I got to get out of here. I'll, as I always ask you, please pray for the, the sick and the shut in and those in bereavement. Please keep them in, in your prayers. Um, stay safe out there. COVID the flu and all of this other stuff still out there in the world. So you make sure that you take care of yourself. Okay. And I always remember, I love you. I love you. I love you. And the reason I am like I am, I love you. I love God more though. <laughs> Amen. So until next time, until next time, keep us in prayer. Call me out by name. We're, we're just, we're just looking forward to seeing you. Okay. All right. Take care.